The date is June 10th, 2022. I'm sitting here with Nick and Josh, and uh, we're in Las Vegas. We're, we're working with the Las Vegas Fire Rescue Department doing a little, uh, not a little, but actually a very extensive train the trainer for their battalion chief. So it's been a, a great week here. Um, we are talking about a lot of great stuff that is happening in Phoenix at the CTC and then at other places like this all around the country that are having us uh, come out, uh, visit them and either deliver a, a, a two day workshop or also deliver a train the trainer. So let's talk a little bit first, Josh, things on the road. When, when we go on the road, uh, what do people do for that? Uh, how, how do they get that to happen? What's the advantage to that? And, and then we'll talk about the advantage of sending people to Phoenix and some of the great workshops coming up. Uh, this fall out there yeah so uh, blue card went on went on the road on steroids i'll say like two and a half years ago a piece of that is it, it just makes sense that we can send two or three people to an organization that has you know eight or more people that they want to train in an instructor class or in one of the workshops we, we can go on site way cheaper and deliver the program then they can send anybody to Phoenix. So uh, at this point, every program that Blue Card has and every program that we are going to have is deliverable on the road. So with that said, uh, you know, last week we were in Delta Township, Michigan, delivering a two-day Mayday workshop. Wrapped up from that. We're in Las Vegas this week. They got nine battalion chiefs that they're putting through the instructor class. Uh, next week, we're in Cincinnati, Colerain Township, Ohio, uh, with 16 people who are becoming instructors. We're also at Cypress Creek, Texas next week with uh, like 13 people that are becoming instructors. And then uh, I think it's the last week of the month. We're back at Orland Park, Illinois for an on the road train the trainer, I think with 12 or so, you know, new instructors. Yeah, so every every program we have is available on the road. So if you're interested in that, you can re just reach out to me, Josh at bshifter dot com, or or you know call me anytime. Um, as far as the workshops go, we started that May Day workshop in September of twenty one. We did the first few there in uh, Phoenix, and from there we started the phone started lighting up with people who were. They'd send two or three people to the Phoenix class, and they said, we want you to come on site, and we want every company officer to hear this, and we can't possibly send 40 or 80 or 100 or 300 or how many ever officers that they have to Phoenix. So um, the May Day workshop is available on the road, up to 40 students. And if somebody wanted more information on that, just reach out to me um, or reach out to the office, and they'll they'll get in contact with me, and we'll, we'll get it set up and booked. So coming up, other things that we're – we're, we're doing and working on. I don't want to forget the safety class, the size up and fire extinguishment tactics class. It looks like I think we're going to do like 15 or 20 of those on the road, you know, at least this year. Um, and that's available um, just if they call the office and or they want more information on it, they can pick, get it there. Explain to us what the safety class is just for the folks who don't know. Yeah. So the, the safety class size up and fire extinguishment tactics class is, is something that. As we were on the road, we were seeing that there was a missing component there that, that we could help with as far as uh, really some tactical decision making and task level pieces as far as the people in the field having a understanding of, of a lot of the fire science without getting as in depth on the fire science. So it's a it's a one full eight hour day of classroom. Um, we've been doing it now. Not really, we've been delivering that program for five or six years, and it just continues to get bigger and bigger. Um, so the first day is all classroom, uh, fire science, flow path, understanding our PPE capabilities. There's a thermal imaging component connected to it. And then the second day, we burn uh, props. So we got a couple different prop options. Uh, we got two different alcohol props that you know, they're using in the UL boot camp and all that, that Flashpoint fire equipment, you know, produces. And then we have the steel uh, Class A wood burning prop available. And that class is a train the trainer. So uh, we come on site, we deliver the information, we leave them with the curriculum, we leave them with the prop. So that, again, so that they can stay connected to it. It's not one and done. Like we came on site, did a class, and then they can't keep, 
you know, connected and doing something with it. So, you know, our, our real model is train the trainer so that they have it at their own organization to stay connected with everything we do. Then there's some awesome two-day workshops coming up in Phoenix. Uh, first of all, the Mayday Management Workshop, which, as Josh alluded to, there's been a lot of those already. There's another one this fall coming up uh, on September 8th and 9th at the AVB CTC. And then there's some new workshops coming up. There's a Division Operations Workshop a big box workshop then uh, in December. So first of all, let's start off with the division ops workshop. What can we expect with, with that two day? So in November, the, the division ops tactical boss uh, piece is it, it's a whole two days on what does it look like when you're going to push, push that person forward into a, into that division and, you know, a little bit more detail on that job description. How do you, how do you fill that out? How do you train those people? How do you use them in a bunch of different building types? You know, sometimes they think like, well, I would never push a boss forward at a house fire. Well, you wouldn't until you wanted them there when somebody said mayday, 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 or the event escalated, which so that goes back to something we talk about. Like we treat everything like it's a one hand line fire until it's not. So, you know, we, we build out the organization when the, when the, when the incident isn't being solved and we, you know, are going to continue to sign, assign companies when the incident's escalating. So build the organization based off the incident you know, escalating. So, you know, we're, we'll end up doing, you know, some simulations and, and multiple different building types besides going through what is that real job responsibility. And, and a big component to it that we'll have is the tactical accountability piece, like moving those passports around. You know, we see in almost every line of duty death report that happens in the IDLH and then in a ton of the stuff from Project Mayday that a total lack of accountability and, you know, we talk about accountability. There's task level accountability, tactical level accountability, strategic level accountability. Well, the focus here is on the in this class is going to be like, what does that look like with the tactical accountability? We'll still have the task level and strategic level that we'll, you know, do there. But we'll, we'll just give more focus to the tactical level boss. How do you fill that out? How do you train your people to do that job? And then what's going on at the big box two day workshop? So the big box two day workshop, a, a big piece of that is going to be focused on uh, our industries, trying to get our industry to better understand uh, sprinkler controlled fires or fires in sprinkler buildings. So we're working with the National Fire Sprinkler Association, Shane Ray from there. We did a podcast, you know, a month ago or so with him. So we're working with them to get them to come on site and do a whole eight hours on, you know, what should the fire department really be doing when they pull up at a building that has a sprinkler system in it? And then, you know, them talking about what that sprinkler, all the, what those sprinkler systems are really designed to do, that there's a difference between a sprinkler system, a huge difference between a sprinkler system that's in a apartment building, a sprinkler system that's in this hotel that we're sitting in, a sprinkler system that's in, you know, maybe Lowe's where I go and shop. And an even bigger difference, potentially, in the sprinkler system that's in a distribution center, like a Walmart distribution center that is, you know, 1.2 million square feet and full of material that's constantly going in and out. So, you know, that that's a that's a piece of that. And then we're going to run uh, multiple simulations on the second day of that. Um, you know, connecting the tactical boss, understanding, you know, the suppression systems, building out the incident, you know, a little further. What would the big bo big box look like? And I guess I really should have started with it that when we're pulling up on any of these big box buildings, you know, life safety is uh, the life safety profile is really low. Really, the risk is us. And, and we're, we're really the overhaulers because if the sprinkler system's not controlling it, there's not a good chance that we're going to do anything with it if the sprinkler system doesn't control the fire. So it's that whole different mindset of it's not a house. It's a it's a 120,000 square foot building. And I need to just slow down because there's no life safety profile here. I'm going to build some attack teams, gather information, let the sprinkler system do what it's going to do, support the sprinkler system because the sprinkler system's the firefighters, and that's what our job is, is to support the firefighters, right? And then we become, you know, the overhauler. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through, you know, all of that for two days. It's just an expanded piece, and it's CE. So blue card certified people get CE uh, credit and hours for, you know, attending any of the workshops. And then right after the first of the year in January, we don't have a date for it yet, but watch for it. I think it, it'll, it'll, it's going to be a, a great class. We're going to do a firefighter health and wellness in January, two day workshop, like the mindset of 
uh, you know, us doing decon and protecting ourselves and the IDLH as well as a, a mental health component, you know, to that. Cool. Looking forward to that one. Well, all those are available right now, except for the, the, the health and wellness, like uh, Josh said, that's going to be announced soon. But you can go to bshifter.com, go to events, and then all those classes are there to register. And those are the ones that are being held at the AVBCTC in Phoenix, which Nick has been like a construction superintendent or what, what, are, you, what are you building over there? What, what have, what's the change has been in the last uh, few weeks, even at the uh, CTC with some improvements you've done? The latest thing we just finished was uh, we built stadium style seating in the classroom. So it cleaned it up a little bit and improved the uh, sound dynamics in the room. It, it, it's just a little better to teach in and attend. Uh, the other reason we did that is you could get power to everybody's desk. Everybody shows up and they got uh, electrical needs. So we were able to fix all that. Uh, they're revamping the store in the merch room. So that's going to be more of a proper set setting to do, you know, the shipping and other stuff that the girls are screwing with right now. You know, I find it's one of those things that you're never you're we're never going to be done with the building. So it's just something we're always going to be screwing with it, which is good. It's uh, it's coming along. We, we got the the downstairs is becoming more and more finished. The, the kitchen and fire station sides done now. We got a stove finally. What else happened downstairs? We got some display cases. That's the other thing is we're, <clears throat> as we move on, we're going to, the downstairs part of it, you have the classroom down there, then you have the lunchroom. And then on the other side, you kind of have the, the fire station with the kitchen and the, that's going to become a museum. So we're starting to fill that up with some memorabilia here. Probably in the next four or five months, they'll start that we're going to recreate my dad's office down off that apparatus floor and have a little social area there. So it's uh, it's it's going well. We're uh, hopefully I don't know if we'll have it done by the end of this year, but we're going to have some outdoor spaces. A lot of people come in from other parts of the country, and it's they don't have very nice springs and winters. So when they come here, they want to spend more time outside, and and that's part of it. Is right now it's just too damn hot to do anything in Phoenix. But with the workshops, one of the nice things is when it's when it's nicer out, we get food trucks in, and it becomes more of a social thing at lunchtime. And so we'll keep we'll keep making improvements as we go. So it, it is a, a sweet facility to go to a class in the content is great i mean number one is the content and then to have a nice educational facility you can go to hang out in get some um good nutrition in from uh the folks who bring that in and then there's a lot of networking that goes on i mean the the, the folks that come to our, both the train the trainers and the workshops end up hanging out together going to ball games and that stuff and then they make connections so we hear things about like national fire academy people go there they connect that same connection opportunity is going on at the CTC when people from different fire departments from around the country start kibitzing about like, oh, well, you're doing this at your department or they all realize they all have the same challenges and problems. So that's a real good connection for those people. Oh, and the other great thing is you don't have to for those for the workshops, you don't have to be blue card to come. So you could you could if you're interested in blue card or you're hearing about some of the, the statistics from Don Abbott's study and some of the best practice that we're talking about, just come out to the workshop. It's a really nice introduction for you to get on board and see what is going on, uh, both with B Shifter and all the blue card activity. 